Hello people, it's been requested a lot that I do a data persistence tutorial. So, yep, here I am now doing a data persistence tutorial. So, to start off, I've got a blank place in Roblox Studio. I've uh, put a script in, into the workspace. And inside the script, I've got a little layout here. So we've got our first event, player added event. So when the player enters the game, uh, we're going to create a leader stats for them. Okay and next we've got a player removing event so when the player gets removed from the game or when they when they leave the game then we will save their we'll save all their information in here okay so what we're going to do first then is we're going to create an int value uh, let's call it cache okay so cache equals uh, instance.new int value and we're going to stick it into the leader stats. Okay. Cache.name equals cache. Right. So now we've got our cache. And now we're going to create a string value. So just trying to think what I could make this. Aha. Uh -huh, rank. Instance.new. String value. Rank. Right. No. We need to insert this into the stats. Rank dot name equals. I don't know why it's lagging for me. Yeah, Studio seems to be lagging for me a bit. I don't know if it's lagging for you, but I don't know why. Just as soon as I start recording, it starts lagging. Oh well. Right. So we've got two uh, leader stat. Uh, we've got two stats inside our leader stats. Uh, I don't know what they're called properly, but you get the point so now we're going to go and test this uh, start server with one player as you can see I'm using the new version of Roblox Studio you don't have to be using a new version but I just happen to be using it okay so here we've got cache and I've got zero cache uh, I can just go and change that value here let's say I've got whoops I need to view properties uh, and why can't I change this? Maybe I'll go into server. Server mode and try and change it. Oh, I can't change Oh, wait, no, I can change it. It was just grayed out. Okay, so let's change that to 10. And change rank to private. Okay, so as you can see, in the leaderboard, my rank changes to private and my cache changes to 10. So, what if I wanted to save these values for when I come back to the game next time? Okay, because I don't want to come back to the game and have zero cache and rank as nothing. I don't want to start off as nothing. I want to keep my rank and cache. So, the way to do that is... Well, first, I need to do something before that, quickly. Uh, let's set cache to... The default of zero and rank dot value equals the default is private we'll say and right so that looks pretty good okay so now that we've got our cache and rank um, variables there uh, we need to find a way of changing these variables okay so I'm going to insert a brick into the game now this is nothing to do with data persistence. I'm just, I'm just trying to do something. Uh, insert a part into the game, and if you just insert a script into that part, and here we're going to, when when the player touches this part, we're going to change the values of cache and rank to something else. Okay, so script dot parent dot touched connect function okay and we're going to say we're going to check for the humanoid first equals hit dot parent uh, find first child this is all good scripting practice you should know this you should know how to do all this if you don't then you should watch some of my previous tutorials okay so We've checked now we can get the player player equals game dot players get uh get player from character hit dot parent okay lovely 
and then we can say player dot leader stats dot cash equals one hundred player dot lead dot rank equals general okay so as you can see now we've got our cash and rank to change just by touching the brick okay so now when I enter the place uh, here we go now when I enter the place we should see that my stats will change when I touch the brick okay here we go cash zero rank private uh, touch the brick and nothing has happened Urgh. let's have a look why view output cash is not a valued member of int value what are they talking about of course it is look boom cash rank okay I'm going to quickly go and check that out to see what the problem is uh, line six player dot leader stat dot cash oh here we go dot value I forgot to change the value that is a common mistake we all make that mistake uh, test start server okay so now when I touch the brick here we go my cash changes to 100 and my rank changes to general okay so now we've got our things to change next time I enter the game I want my cash and rank to stay like that I don't want it to reset back to zero cash and rank private I want it to stay like this so how am I going to do that well we are going to do some data persistence now but the thing is you can't do data persistence uh, on a play solo server you've got to actually be in a proper Roblox game to do that sort of data persistence stuff so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a quick place um, let's go to develop uh, build new place uh, empty base plate yeah that'll do and let's change some of the names of that to testing saving yeah that'll do and yep that's good to go what we've got to do now is make it active there we go so now what I'm going to do now is go to file publish to roblox as testing saving so I'm going to publish this place to my testing saving place and now that we've got that done I can start to work on the data persistence so if I want to load values then we use a function called wait for data ready okay so we use that function on the player I'll explain it afterwards once I do it so player function wait for data ready and there we go that's done so now what the script is going to do is it's going to wait for the data inside this player to be fully loaded and then we're going to execute the code after it okay so if you start to try and load data from the player before the data actually loads then we're going to get some error so we use this function here to pause the script until all the data uh, all the variables or not variables but all the data like cache and rank uh, all the data inside the player is actually loaded and then we're going to uh, show that data into the leaderboard okay so now that's done uh, I'm going to do this so player dot cache actually no I don't even need to do that because we've already got a cache variable here so cache dot value equals uh, player load int wait no it's, it's load number uh, player load number and there's also one thing we need to do before we can load our number we need to use what's called a key okay because inside the data ready uh, or inside the player so we're going to have all our data inside the player okay so our cache is going to be inside the player but in order to access it we need a special key uh, to access it now I'm going to quickly make a key up here on line one uh, but I'll explain it afterwards again and you'll kind of get the hang of it after you do it a few times so key equals uh, for the meantime I'm just going to call it test but you'd probably want to call it I don't know something like uh, player stats yeah let's just call it this player stats and that's now our key 
So we can pass this key as a parameter into the load number function. Okay, so now that we've done that, our cache.value is going to be equal to our uh, load number key, okay? Because our key is basically like a variable inside the data ready uh, function. I'm just trying to think of a good way to explain it. Um, inside the server, which has all of the player's stats, like cache, you can't just say load number uh, with nothing there. It's not going to know which number to load. It's going to have all the information about your player, but it's not going to know which number to load. So by passing it in a key, you're telling it which number to load, okay? You're telling it, I want the cache. I want to load cache, okay? So that's what it's going to grab from the server, and that's what it's going to show on the leaderboard, okay? So instead of calling it key, let's call it cache key, okay? And let's call it cache, okay? Now let's pass in cache key into there, okay? And we'll do the same thing for rank. So rank dot value equals player dot load. Whoops, player dot colon load string. Make sure it's a colon. It's a function, and we're going to call this rank key. Okay. Nice. We're going to make rank key up here. Rank. Okay. So you kind of get the point now. If we were using the same key for each of these. Uh, load number and load string, we'd be getting the same value into both of these leaderboard uh, things. Okay, so that's why we have different keys for different numbers or different things that we want to load. But I'm not really good at explaining things today, but you kind of get the point. Anyway, now the loading bit is done, we're going to want to save the values when we exit the game. Okay, so let's do that now player dot player colon save number we're going to use the same key cache key but except save number takes two parameters it takes the key that you want to save the number into okay and then it takes the actual value so we're going to save player dot leader stat dot cache dot value okay I'm going to explain it all after at the end of the tutorial if you don't get it so there we go, we've saved the cache as a save number. We're going to save the string now, the rank, as save string. Okay, because rank is a string, as it's in the quotes here, speech marks, as we call them. And number is just a number, as an int. Okay, so save string, uh, rank dot value. Right, so we want to use the rank key as well. Okay, all good. So we've saved the rank here, we've saved the number here, or cache, and now that they're both saved into their keys, when the player enters the game, we're going to load these numbers and strings from the key that we've saved it into, and we're going to display it onto the leaderboard. Okay, so we can go and try that now by publishing to Roblox. Is it me, or can you just hear like loads of screaming outside? I don't know if it's too quiet for you guys to hear it, but I can hear a lot of screaming outside and shouting from kids. Oh well. Right. Yeah, that, that seems published now. Testing, saving. Yep, saved. So let's exit off Roblox Studio and let's let's play. Hopefully this works on the first go. If it doesn't, I will be disappointed. Right. Okay, awesome. So, we've got our cache and rank up there. Uh, the only thing is it doesn't actually show. Oh, I know why. But anyway, I'm going to touch the brick and here we can see cache is now equal to 100 and rank is now equal to general so when I leave the game and yep I've left the game shut down just to make sure so we're not in the same server okay there's no more servers left I've shut it down and I'm going to rejoin the game and let's see if it's actually worked 
this is going to be quite a long tutorial because I've got a bit to explain after this okay we've rejoined and as you can see my cache is now 100 and my rank is general without even having to touch the brick so yeah the data persistence has worked and my stats are now have now been saved okay ignore that um, edit let's go to edit and re-edit the place because I want to quickly tell you something okay let's go back to the script so now this data persistence script works it works it's good and there's nothing else we can do to it well there actually is something we can do to it so let me just tell you what we can do to it right so just in case uh, let's say a player joins then exits immediately and when they join their data hasn't loaded yet um, so that means their cache is going to be equal to zero but let's say they leave immediately and it saves their data but as zero okay so it's basically like resetting all their data um, we don't want to do that do we we don't want to reset the player's data as soon as they join and then leave then they leave in immediately so what we're going to do is before we save the number or rank we're going to make a quick check so if player.cache.value is not equal to zero then then save okay so by doing this we're not going to be saving any values that are equal to zero okay uh, what have I just done uh, why is there a red line under here oh uh, I'm using the wrong syntax okay there we go not equal to zero that's how you do not in Lua with a little squiggly line okay so we're gonna do the same thing for rank we're gonna say if player dot value is not equal to private which is the default value then save okay so we're basically checking to see that if the values are not equal to the default values that we have up here then save because we don't want to save any default values because it could reset the players uh, stats okay so now we are pretty sure that we're not resetting anyone's stats uh, we're not resetting anyone's stats so we're good to go um, the only problem with this is that say you had a shop in your game uh, let's say yeah let's say you had a shop in your game uh, you start off with zero the player earns 100 cash and then the player buys something for 100 uh, cash okay and then their stats is equal to zero and then they leave the game their stats are not going to save because it's equal their cash will be equal to zero but they're still going to have they're still going to like they they bought their item but they're keeping their cash it's like they're buying the item for free so this isn't the best thing to do this check if you have a shop in your game okay that that actually removes cash from your leaderboard so just bear that in mind when creating these data persistence scripts okay so yeah I think that's pretty much it um, what you could do as well is you could make a separate script or something uh, I'm just gonna do it in the same script but you could do a separate script uh, while true do and what this script will do is it will basically every 20 seconds or so uh, it's going to it's going to wait 20 seconds then it's going to loop through all the players for IV in pairs uh, game dot players get players whoops uh, get players do okay so it's going to loop through all the players then it's going to save all of their stuff okay uh, let's just fix this lovely so yep yeah, every 20 seconds it's going to loop through every single player in the game and it's going to save all of their stats okay uh, I think the best way to do that is so change the player to V because we've put a V in there. Okay. If you know how to use four IV in pair loops, then you'll know why I'm using V here. But anyway, uh, that's another thing you can do. Just in just in case maybe the server crashes and all their stuff doesn't save, 
uh, you've got like a sort of backup saving system, so which loops through all the players and saves every 20 seconds just in case the server crashes or or in case the game shuts down or something like that. Okay, so anyway, that is basically how to do data persistence. Uh, you can also do things like saving objects and saving booleans. Uh, if you just go to, well, this is the new version of Roblox Studio, so I'm not quite sure how to use this. Uh, crikey, I don't even know how to get to the object browser. Uh, yeah, I I don't know how to get to the object browser from here. Oh, goodness sake, stupid studio. But anyway, if you're in the old version of Studio and you know how to get to the object browser, uh, yeah, go to the object browser and have a look at all the different functions you can use to save uh, different different things in the player. So you can do things like saving boolean values, you can save a true and false value, or you can save objects, like if, if someone makes a house in the game and you want to save that house, then you can save all the objects, or you can save the house as a model, and then you can reload that house when they enter the game. Uh, I'm going to let you try and figure out how to do that. If you can't do that, then I might make a tutorial on how to do that. But anyway, apart from that, that is pretty much all I wanted to show you. Um, so now you understand how to do data persistence. Okay, so anyway, I'll see you in the next tutorial then, which might be... Actually, I don't, I don't know when that will be, <laughs> whenever I'm free to make another tutorial, really. Anyway, okay, bye.